How's it going, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube? My name is Mathis Starcraft, and we are back with Game 3 between Yao, Sun Tzu, and Saunders. Uh, last game, uh, we are now tied 1-1 in the series. It is a best of five. Last game, we saw uh, Sun Tzu take it quite handily, as um, Saunders decided to go for uh, the typical Mutalisk Baneling Zergling build, and uh, a few he de dedicated his attack. Uh, his economy to his army quite early in the game, threw a lot of his units away, particularly a good chunk of his mutilists, and uh, that kind of put him behind in the economy, Played, tried to play catch up the rest of the game, and Sun Tzu took advantage of that and quickly dominated him. First game we did see Saunders win with a uh, Zergling uh, Infester build primarily, uh, as he is known for a heavy Infester build quite typically as I am told. So we'll see if that play comes back as it did win him the first game. Perhaps he'll use it again in the second game just to secure him a second win if he can pull it off. So we'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to this. Um, I should have the uh, fourth and uh, the fourth game up after this one. Um, I'm hoping to get them both casted today. Uh, we'll see. I did work quite long so I am sorry that this series is taking a bit longer to get up but things have been quite hectic. But we will, I will do my best to get the next game up as soon as I can. These guys having friendly chat. They've actually been having friendly chat every game, um, which I love to see. Just because uh, sportsmanship is something you don't see as often in esports as you do in other sports. Uh, such as like football, baseball. Yeah, you have your taunters and whatnot. But they are all pretty good sports about it. And I would like to see that happen more often here. We are going to be opening up with the one Rax at the top. We're going to have the drone coming up here to Rax. Saunders, I mean Sun Tzu, pulling his uh, SCVs just to kind of ward him off. Does not want the uh, drone to get a good scout. Doesn't want him to see what kind of tech he's going to be going. After that barracks is built, we will see what happens. Um, so, going to be trying desperately to kill this off. we got a little pentagram going. Um, just, you know, trying to summon uh, the demons and devils of the Zerg army to bring him good luck in this game. We'll see if it works. Up here, we do have an early expansion dropping down. Pool expansion before gas. So, on a big map like this, that's smart. You want to get up an expansion as early as you can. Get one step up on your enemy in front as far as the economic lead goes. And finally, finally driving off the drone, but not before he takes a peek and sees at the factory. And the reactor is going down, so he's immediately going to expect um, Hellions as, uh, you know, he, you really don't ever see anyone build a reactor on a barracks and use it for Marines early in the game as it's more or less a waste of your economy and a waste of your minerals. So this is not uncommon at all. This will be swapping with that factory and pumping out pretty, mass he pretty good mass Hellions. Uh, we'll see. That's actually quite, quite useful against a Zerg early game if you can catch him off guard. Problem is, he saw it coming, and as you can see, his response is grab roaches. As his roach warrant is going down, I'm going to continue to put, uh, leave those three guys on gas. He's going to need it for the roaches, and roaches do a very, very good job at denying any, um, any type of, of Hellion harass. Even dropping just a spine crawler in your mineral line can do a good job at warding away Hellions. So we'll see. How well he, uh, how well this is going to help him out? Is he going to dedicate a lot of his early economy into uh, roaches? There are a couple popping out now, which is smart. You definitely want that. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. We do have. Uh, yep, there are the Hellions right now, getting four out right off the bat, as they will be popping out there. We'll see what he decides to go. If he decides to go really heavy harass and grab that blue flame, or if he decides to stick with just early like four, four to six. Hellions running in, doing as much economic damage as they can, and swapping over to more something a bit more substantial, like uh, Marine Marauder, Siege Tank. Uh, so we'll see what his response to that is going to be. Uh, Mule just popping off, deciding he doesn't want to work anymore, and uh, gives off his life. There are the Hellions killing off a Zergling. He knows they're coming, um, and he does have more roaches on the way, so he'll have about five on the field once they're done. Continuing to drone up, it's a little bit behind uh, in the work account Saunders is because of needing to dedicate some of his economy to the roaches just to ward off the Hellions. So one way or another, uh, Sun Tzu has gotten the reaction he wants. He has forced him to dump some of his economy into an early army uh, just to get that, uh, to ward off those Hellions. So you're going to see the natural is not going to be nearly as uh, saturated as he would like. Hasn't done a drone transfer, did a couple, uh, but I think he actually has uh, both his hatcheries. Yeah, rallied over here, so has not done a drone transfer. Doesn't think it's necessary to do so. What I like to see is, you know, leave your main hatch rally to your minerals, 
grab a handful of uh, drones and move them over to your natural and then just continue to pump drones as they will replenish themselves in due time with that but deciding not to just deciding to leave it as is just gonna let drones kind of meander their way over there um, so this is a nice little wall actually I like this of uh, roaches really hellions are not gonna be able to get in here without taking either substantial damage and losses or both so uh, as you can see he reacted quite well and pretty much rendered this hellion harass borderline useless as now he really can't do too much um, we do have siege tech going down and now we're gonna be doing something more common that the marine siege tank mix maybe we'll see something else mixed in um, not quite sure what he has planned as this is all he has he is looking like he's gonna be grabbing an early expansion soon Let's take a look at the work count here uh, he uh, he is now behind so great to have this up and running as soon as his orbital you'll see him probably saturate a bit more and then move out to take his natural as uh, he needs to quickly there he is taking out his natural now uh, needs to quickly drop that down catch up as his whole hellion harass did not do uh, what he wanted to do typically what you want is to do some economic damage so your early investment into the Hellions wasn't a complete waste and you can put him behind in the worker count ever so slightly but since that didn't happen at all his Hellions are just gonna hold on to the Zelnungo Watchtower and he's gonna have to quickly catch up in the worker count or at least try to push out Lair Tech is about to pop and a couple Zerglings roasting to the death from these Hellions sitting at the Watchtower but now he's gonna move out with these guys and he does have Speedling upgrade to shut these guys down and if he doesn't see them coming then he will uh, be in a little bit of trouble and here they are is he gonna pull them out no yes he is gonna pull them out an extra hellion dropping by saying hello joining that army roaches gonna try and catch up but they are not nearly as fast as they need to be as roach speed has not been researched yet as layer tech has only just started hopefully we'll see roach speed drop down soon and we do have infestation pit dropping quite early in the game with double evolution chambers seeing that is actually nice because he is going to be going to his typical looks like infestation build infester build rather which won him that first game and i loved it the the funnel growths were quite nice it did a lot of damage now he's going to try and uh try to catch these hellions off guard but now they're going to be running in there the roach is a little bit out of position burning a tree in the process is he going to be able to stop them he does have a couple queens there um he is not going to get around here i actually like the placement of these two right here because he can't swing them around back there's a quite a nice wall Pathogen glands being researched as he swings around. He only has one Hellion left, so he's barely any damage. If we take a look, 15 work, uh, sorry, 15 units killed, two workers killed, which is not at all anything he wanted to do. That was kind of useless attack, and they were quickly taken out by the queens, the zerglings, and the roaches sitting back at the base. So kind of really just trying to do some early harassment. Now Blue Flame is going down, so he's not going to give up on the Hellion Harass. I like that as the Zerglings are going to be en masse, and the Blue Flame Hellions are going to be able to take care of that. He pro he saw the Infestation Pit, knew that it was probably going to be some sort of uh, Infestor Zergling build again, which is what he saw in the first game. And instead of just giving up on the, that, he's actually going to be pumping out um, Hellions to take care of it as the Hellions will make quick work of the Zerglings with this particular build and we do have Thors dropping down on the field as well so hoping to do some mass damage to the Infestors I, if you hear my mic move I apologize it's because it's, something is digging in my ear I need to get it away it was causing me pain and pain while I'm casting is not something I want getting ready to take his third a little bit late on the third but that's because he had to invest early into the defense against the early harass investors are now on the field so here we go he's gonna be able to do the damage he was hoping to do uh, last game but ignoring the completely ignoring the mutilus build this game which is smart as there are Thors on the field and I don't know if he knows that but uh, either way it's gonna help him out and Sun Tzu does know that investors are on the ground I'm hoping he built these Thors to handle that. We'll see how well that ends up working for him, as these siege tanks would be definitely enough. He needs to get, um, you know, uh, does he have Borrow? Yes, he does. So he needs to get missile turrets up or some form of detection, as you can, you'll quickly learn that Infestors, especially in Destiny, if you ever watched Root Destiny, who is now just regular Destiny, he has a thing where he does really quick Infestors, and he has the four Infestor Bro Squad, or the four Infestor Hit Squad, the Bro Fester Hit Squad, whatever, where he takes four Infestors, and he sneaks into the base really early and kind of plants them in the mineral line and just fungles the shit out of all of the workers and does an insane amount of damage. Now we have Roach Speed, uh, Roach Speed going down. Both teams just kind of sitting back, macroing up. Uh, he still has not taken his third. He has cleared the rocks and now only now taking the third so very very late third um <clears throat> we'll see how that pans out for him 
Uh, he is still, uh, they are about even now in the worker count, which is not so good for the, um, for the, the, uh, the Zerg here, Saunders, as he is himself is actually getting ready to take his third, but I love this. He does have a Zergling here, so he knows this is happening, and actually, he's gonna be forced to put a scan down, which is a big waste of energy on a single Zergling, and that whole time he knew it was coming to his positioning his army, and now he's gonna be ready to take this out before it gets transformed into a planetary fortress. Now he's going to be getting ready to do such a thing. Moving one Infester in. Uh, I'm not sure what this is for. Just maybe to get a scout or two. Just moving up here it looks like. Not getting too much done. He is not going to get too far. There is a missile turret which he did build which is smart. And there goes the Infester. And now it's almost a planetary fortress. And boom he says. And as he says that here comes the Zerg Swarm. Moving in to take out this expansion before it gets any work done. Um, looks like he will be losing this. The planetary fortress focusing down the zerglings, not the roaches. And here come the hellions trying to clean this up. Dropping down a fungal growth to take out this chunk here. And now the Thor is coming in to quickly wipe this up, but not before he quickly escapes. Good attack by Saunders. I like that. The zergling gave him all the information this season. Now TT says Sun Tzu. Gave him all the information he needed and was able to position his army as it was getting placed. Forced him to waste a lot of energy on that one scan, which allowed him, which basically allowed Saunders to deny him any extra mules or any extra scouting scan. Now he's going to try and catch these guys out of place. Fungal growth thing now pulling back in the wrong direction as these Thors are going to quickly catch him. Burrow! No, he doesn't burrow. Popping those infestors like little water balloons. And now these roaches are going to be moving out. And he says TT in return as those guys had a lot of energy on them and were uh, prime for the prick picking for Sun Tzu. But Saunders is not going to give up here as he is actually quite nicely saturated over here. And uh, is ahead of him about and uh, just about a little under 10 workers ahead. And now he's going to be moving in here to try and take this out. Going to try and catch him off guard. He does have Neural Parasite Research. If he has the energy, he can quickly take one. He does take one, and now he's going to be doing damage to them as quickly as he can. Roaches poking in and out. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to clean this up as the Thor and the Hellions quickly took out that Infestor that was taking over the mind of one of the Thors. If he can get one Thor here, at least it'll have done some damage. There goes one Thor, but not before another one. Quicker research, doing a scan to kill off the ones that have burrowed. So potentially going to be losing his Thor a third here. More siege tanks are going to be taken out by Zerglings. These guys, one of them is going to have enough for a Neural Parasite. Is he going to use it? No, he's going to back up a bit. Try and surround that alien. and he does. And now he's going to take off the one that's been killed. And going to be doing extra damage to the rest of them. One of them is going to be taken out. It looks like he's actually going to be able to clean this up. Or at least force him to pull back. He is not going to be able to. He hasn't even focused down the investor that took over his brain. And now there goes another and another. So cleaning that up. And now suddenly Saunders is in a very dominating position here. As... Pretty much, uh, Sun Tzu has lost his entire army with the exception of a couple of Thors and a couple of Hellions. While he himself has a good chunk of Zerglings and still has four Infestors. Th uh, hive Tech on the way. Not going to worry about rebuilding his army. Going to take this time to actually macro up. He does have his fourth, so he's potentially saturating this. Um, scanning to see what's going on. He does see that Hive Tech is going down right now and actually grabbing that spire so at this point you're not going to be seeing mutilus but since spires are going to be going down you're going to see being broodlord tech switch at some point in the later game which can be quite devastating especially against thors unless the thors can kind of focus fire them down broodlords all can have a distance on the thors that the thors do not and now going to be coming in here again to try and deny this third uh a second time but the uh blue flame as i said there's a good choice to grab those blue flame as they do a lot of damage to those Zerglings, and now here come the Infestor taking over the minds of two of them. If he just focuses down the Infestors, he might be able to do it, but no, he's going to focus down this third, and is it going to be able to stop him? No, it looks like he might be able to deny this. Not, oh, and now he's starting to pull oh, his SCVs to repair. Still doing a good chunk of damage, and now the rest are going to be coming in here, so this third will not be going down. Um, he, he could, at this point, focus down that one Thor, but no. Instead, decided to try and take it down anyway, so pulling his Infestors back quickly needs to run. He can burrow them so they can't do any damage, and uh, hit, deciding to hitting them with a Fungal Growth to do some damage, and then Sun Tzu deciding, screw that, I'm going after them, those bastards. And now here he comes again, and another Fungal, and now they're going to be hurting. You know what? Sun just turns around and says, screw it, they're dead, and there they go. Ouch, and that sucks 
for Sun Tzu, but he's still not out of this game as we do have the Greater Spire going down now. So definitely going to be seeing some Broodlords in the field. I apologize for scrolling all over the place. I shouldn't be scrolling. I should be clicking on the minimap. Uh, let's take a look at our, uh, our unit count. 77 workers for Sun Tzu, so he is actually quite nicely ahead in the macro game as he was not able to take this out. But uh, Sonder himself has a good bank of minerals built up. That is a million and a half Zerglings he could build if necessary. The food is about equal, but uh, Infestors make your army so much more powerful, especially if they have a lot of energy. With the Fungal Gross and the Neural Parasites, you can quickly turn the tides of battle just by grabbing the right units at the right time and fungling a good chunk of the units. Now we have 10 Corruptors popping out. Greater Spire almost done. If Sun Tzu decides to let this continue, this is the problem with Zerg. You do not want to let them macro up for too, too long as it can kill you in the end game as they will quickly bring out their end, ga uh, end game units and wreck your day with them. So we'll see what happens here and now. Uh, just both players just kind of sitting back at this point. I feel like they could both push and there goes all the Broodlords burning his gas and his food and doing it. This could spell the end. We shall see what happens here and he only has a few that's a lot of Thors does he know I know I heard him drop a scan let's see if he does know he does not he only knows that this was going down and there's another scan sadly that's not going to reveal what he needs to know he could probably assume though as that was a very late spire that broodlords are going to be on the field and maybe his response is mass Thor as lots and lots of more Thors are coming out he just looks like he's getting ready for a big 200-200 push. Spinecrawler is dropping down now just to burn some of those minerals to not let them sit at big minerals. Saunders with the creep spread, not so much. Not a big creep spreading kind of guy. I'm curious as to why he's decided to not be to spread his creep as that can force a lot of scans on, on uh, Sun Tzu here <clears throat> and burn his energy quite quickly, cleaning up that Hellion before they're able to do anything. And now he himself is going for a fourth but not before the big confrontation is going. This, if this does not go Sun Tzu's way, this is going to be the end of the game for him. And now the Broodlords are revealed and the Fungal Growth preventing the other um, Hellions from moving on in. And now he's going to bring in his Infestors who are going to quickly grab the a bunch of the Thors who are going to turn on their companions. It's almost like compadres, but companions are now quickly clean this up. This is not looking for good for Sun Tzu. This shows you the power of the Infestor as they, with the uh, Fungal Growth and the Neural Parasites, really, really do turn the tide of battle. And once they are in there, can quickly just burrow. And now the Broodlords are going to finish this up and clean it up quite, quite quickly. And now I just don't see it turning around for Sun Tzu. It looks like this game may be a little on the end part of it all. Great game, uh, Infestor play by uh, Saunders. Did lose a few early ones by a uh, uh, bad positioning in the middle of the map, his original four, but that did not deter him at all. Now, here comes the swarm of Zerglings to quickly run in here. The LOL going down by Sun Tzu, as he knows this is the end for him, as he quickly loses everything very, very quickly. So, I don't know, he looks like he's just going to try and tough this out. Thors did worse against Broods than I thought. Happy face. So he does know. I'm glad he's taking the loss with pleasure. It looks like Saunders is going to have a lead 2-1. So we'll see what happens in game four. I will see you guys next cast. And don't forget to subscribe.